Hey everyone, so today I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to set up a basic rope joint. And now the rope joint is a little bit peculiar um, of a joint just because it, it doesn't necessarily mean what it's called. Um, it, it essentially acts like a distance joint where it tries to maintain a maximum length between two points on two bodies. Um, so you could think of it like that, uh, but it does allow rotation and whatnot, and you can essentially use it just like you would in trying to simulate an actual rope. Um, now, the kind of caveat that comes with it is you have to create all the rope segments. It doesn't necessarily make a whole bunch of bodies for you or anything. A joint is a joint. Um, there's clear distinction between that. And uh, so you have to be kind of careful how you set up the joint to begin with, and it'll heavily depend on where your anchors are set, the max length you get, you give it, and uh, where the initial configuration of these bodies are. So uh, just to kind of jump right in, I have um, my target body as I've used in previous examples, and this time uh, I've turned on gravity um, just because I want to demonstrate the rope-like properties you can get, and uh, other than that, uh, it's essentially similar to all my other tutorials in the way that this class is set up, um, so I can influence the bodies by using my target body moving around and whatnot, and you guys can see how it interacts with it. So to start, um, we're going to be using multiple bodies this time around, and uh, I'm going to start with an array of bodies, and the array is uh, that we're going to be using is provided by libgdx, and it's a special kind of array, and it works kind of like an array list. So we're going to uh, make an array of bodies equals new array body, okay? And uh, we're going to add a single body to that just to start. So bodies dot add, and I'm just going to take this one from down here real quick, just that method call, uh, so we can have a body to start with, and then we're gonna turn this to zero, and turn that one to 16, just to put a little above the zero mark of our world center. And then we're going to begin a for loop, and uh, we'll use that to add a whole bunch of bodies at once and turn it into a rope. So we're gonna think of this as our base, and we're gonna attach a rope to it. So, uh, the base is static, and it, it has fixed rotation. That's what these two booleans are for. And so we're going to do int i equals 1, and I'll explain why I start at 1 in a bit. This is less than 5, and then i plus plus, as usual. Uh, pretty generic for loop. And uh, then I'm going to add another body, but this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to have a negative i times 32 and I'm going to change the width to be 4. So it's going to be a pretty slim box and kind of look like a rope segment. Um, I'm also going to change these to false. So it's a dynamic body and it can rotate uh, because we all know that ropes can freely flow in every direction they want. Um, and the thing after that is uh, getting our joint ready. So. If you're kind of new to these videos, I haven't seen any of the other joint videos, uh, this one is uh, to get started. There's three things you need to do when it comes to creating a joint, and uh, we're just going to call that RDEF. And the first thing is initialization. The second thing is setting the two bodies that you want to tie together with this joint. And then the third thing is creating that joint into your world. Um, of course, some other joints, uh, as those of you who saw in the pulley joints, they do require some extra configuration to actually get working properly. However, you can just run with whatever you get out of the box uh, if you are happy with it. However, there are some pretty strange physical conditions that kind of make it look unrealistic and really put you out of that simulation of uh, real world properties. Um, so like I said, the first thing, uh, initialize it. So you have your rope joint definition, and then uh, there's a lot of public variables that you can access, and the first two, like I was stating, setting your bodies that you want, and you're going to set this to bodies.get 
i minus 1. And the reason I say i minus 1 and I start at i equals 1 is so I can get the 0 index, uh, which is this first body. And it just gets that previous body every time it gets in the loop. And so our def dot body b is going to be i, so the current body that I just added in this uh, sequence of the loop. Okay, and so after that, uh, you want to create your joint into the world. So world dot create joint, and that's going to be our def. Okay, and so like I said, those are the three main things you really need. Those are the requirements. Um, of course, with if we run it right now, it's definitely not going to look pretty, but uh, it'll definitely work. And uh, as you can see, there's obviously some variable that we do need to set that's not cooperating here. Um, so we can get out of that real quick. And uh, the next thing that I want to get set up is the collide connected. And we're going to set that to, you know what, I'm going to set that to false. Or I guess if they all touch, you know, you're just going to set that to true. And what collide connected does, uh, as mentioned in previous videos, uh, it allows you to determine whether or not the bodies that are joined together still collide with each other or not. By default, this is set to false in a lot of uh, the joints, and uh, that means it turns off that expected functionality of the bodies colliding with each other. So as soon as you join a body, they are told by default not to collide anymore. And uh, that's just kind of common practice for, for these joints to work like that, just so you can get in natural swings and rotations and whatnot, and so they don't interfere with each other when they're joined together. Um, but in this case, because we're working with a rope, uh, we want it to interact with all of itself, so that's what we want to do there. And uh, then we also want to set max length, and we're going to set that to, uh, let's just set it to one for now. Or maybe, you know what, yeah, one should be fine. Um, so yeah, that's one meter, by the way, because Anytime you send units to box 2D, it's going to make it work in meters. Um, the reason I'm sending 32 here, which is a pixel distance, is because I do convert it down to world units in the create box static method that I have there. So just be mindful of that. Um, next thing, uh, you want to set the local anchors. Local anchors are basically where the joint is going to be tied to relative to uh, body A or body B, uh, which is specified to uh, by the A or B appended to the end of local anchor. And uh, so that's going to be local anchor set 0. And because we want this, uh, so this is going to be body A. And on the first iteration of the loop, it's going to be the basic body, or our base body that we have up here. And because it is 1 meter high, it's technically 16 meters uh, down that we want. So we want the bottom of this and the top of this, so they're as close as possible, um, kind of the edges, so it looks like they're connected at the edges. And we're going to set that to, like I said, because this is 16 uh, half width, because Boxer D likes to work from the center, we can do 1 meter divided by 2, and so that'll give us that half meter, or I mean we could also do like 0.5f, uh, which is just half a meter, and uh, we want that to be negative because we want that down, the downward location. And then we have local anchor B, and we're going to set that to the opposite because these are still one meter uh, tall, and so that's going to be 0.5f. So with that, um, I think we should get the right kind of setup there now. Um, and if we run it again, you'll notice we'll have a pretty basic rope going for us. So there we go. Uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, we have this rope-like object. Um, nothing too special about it. You'll notice, like when when I get in between those bodies, it doesn't let them stretch really. I like I can kind of fit through them because I did make them one meter in width, so it, I can actually manage to make my way through. But uh, for the most part, it maintains that one meter distance between the bodies, and um, you'll notice it has that nice kind of rope-looking quality to it. Just kind of flows back and forth depending on these segments that I have created here. And um, do note, as 
uh, most joints are shown, that blue line will signify where the joints are. It's not an actual collatable object, just these pink and green boxes are actual like body fixtures that you can collide with and whatnot. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed this pretty basic, straightforward tutorial. Uh, the rope joints kind of one of the easier ones to work with, but um, you can also kind of achieve the same thing with a revolute joint with the rotations and whatnot, or even the distance joint will give you that uh, max length property. Um, so just be mindful, you have a lot of options, and uh, I mean, I could just run this and see a bunch of joints just fill up this area, and you can mess with them and whatnot, now you just have this huge rope. So. With that, uh, like I said, hope you guys enjoy the video, and like, comment, subscribe as usual, and hope to see you next time. Thank you.